what I want to focus on is the 96% that buy into the wasted vote argument. Not the 4% that may be in this crowd or if you're subscribing to uh, being a person of principle and not waste, that you're willing to waste your vote. It's the rest of the population that elects that is 96% of the population. Let's come up with an attainable scheme that, that negates the wasted vote argument. And that method of negating the wasted vote argument is, attain is approval voting. I can't promise you victory. No way, no way. Don't, don't worry, You're, I can't promise you victory. Um, what I can promise you is to negate the wasted vote argument. The only way this is going to push forward, yes, I'm motivated as a libertarian that I want the libertarian party to have viability and visibility. The major parties, their payoff is fewer spoilers and less sabotage. Nader's my poster child for being a spoiler. A spoiler in 2000, and then in 2002 or 2004, I think he ran for, for senator in Pennsylvania and was deliberately funded by Republicans as a saboteur. I don't think that's healthy for America. Either being a spoiler like Perot in 1988 or Nader in 2000, or even worse, is it's cost effective to be a saboteur in subsequent elections. Some people may, may think, yeah, yeah, right. And if your candidate wins, you can be smug. But if your candidate doesn't win, if, even it, the divisiveness and the browbeating that Greens have taken since 2000, I don't know if I, I talk to everyone. I even talk with Greens, and Greens took, have been taking a browbeating from the Democrats for the last dozen years for Nader, for 2000. Is that healthy for democracy? You know, I'm going to say no. Now, part of my background is I do come from Colorado where I'm spoiled with regards to ballot access. With regards to presidential ballot access in Colorado, the numbers speak for themselves. To be a presidential candidate in Colorado takes $500, nine signatures. We had a dozen and a half candidates to include um, Roseanne Barr, you name them. We, we, I think we had max um, 18 plus one write-in. I'm spoiled. I've had the luxury of being able, in a sense, to think about what's the next step. We've been on the ballot. We've, we've had the opportunities. And as libertarians, bottom line, we've blown it. I look back, I think too many of you have heard this, I look back at 40 years of libertarian effort, and I see the presidential candidate crucified every four years. I turn around and say, well, do we think over 40 years, if there were a silver bullet, if the system could be, could be maximized by libertarians, it would happen? No. I mean, 40 years, there's been lots better brains than mine working on it. To me, approval voting's the way out of the wilderness. Some people use Lincoln as their poster child for, oh, it can be done. It can be done. Let's look at that campaign. Number one, Lincoln was the results of the Democrats at the time splitting North and South. Democrats split North and South. The abolitionists chose not to sabotage him. If the abolitionists had put a candidate in there and drained off, siphoned off votes, Lincoln might not have won. In my mind, 
Lincoln's the poster child for approval voting, accomplishing more of a consensus rather than the divisiveness of spoilers and split candidates. How often do I think this will change the election results? My guesstimate, no one knows, but my guesstimate is 5% at most. The reason I say this is currently on presidential history, uh, spoilers have changed the results about 11% of the time. So I'm going to say, assuming that, assuming that spoilers were significant in races 11% of the time, half of the time it might go one way, half the other, and so the results will be changed about 5%. I think, and I can't promise you it's going to be changed the way you want it changed. That's not going to happen. Well, it might, it might, but, but the current system, we get squeezed out of the center. Currently, the world's smallest political quiz is left-right context when we know that it should be top-bottom. When you ask people where you would put uh, Jefferson and Hamilton on the world's smallest political quiz, the distinction between them is what Jefferson's closer to the top, Hamilton's look closer to the bottom, and we think of them still being in the center core. We don't think, when the nation started, it wasn't a left-right division. It, it might have, from the Nolan chart perspective, it was a top-bottom, and I think that is what the approval voting is going to give more viability and visibility to the Libertarian Party so that the, so that the conversation will move up the chart. Also, if the, the major parties uh, co-op our agenda, so much the better. We've advanced liberty. I would like to see Libertarians elected, but I suspect major parties will continue, would, would respond by trying to co-op and uh, hand, uh, minimize that they want to keep their power. With regards to keeping their power, in both Colorado and here in uh, New Hampshire, we have incumbents, the guys in office, actually carrying the bill. For, Col for Colorado, the bill died two weeks ago in the Colorado, uh, state, Colorado Senate Committee, a state Senate committee um, that handles elections. It died three to two, but it was there. The part that, the part that amazes me is these are the guys, three, three people in Colorado currently are most conspicuous as being incumbents being supportive of approval voting. One is our Secretary of State. I don't deny you have to bury, dig deep into his election platform, but he has kind words for approval voting. The other is the state senator who carried this bill uh, this past term, and next year a state representative, uh, Senator Singer, that's told me there's a 95% chance of carrying it. The individuals are there carrying it. I still kind of mystified at their motivation, but I'm grateful. They, I, I try to frame it in the context of fewer spoilers and less sabotage. Here in here in New Hampshire, uh, Representative Dan McGuire, Dan McGuire carried it last year and says told me yesterday that he'll carry it. Um, next year. I mean, it. Now, the, the follow up to that is with all this optimism I'm expressing, uh, what's my time schedule? I've told people two to three decades. I'm just. No one knows. No one knows. Some people find that discouraging. I, I'm hoping to beat that schedule, but this is mysterious. 
It's mysterious. Uh, any, I think that kind of, let me just, I think I've covered my notes. Any specific questions or nagging thoughts? Yes, sir. How does, uh, how does this compare to ranked voting? Okay, ranked voting, which is uh, typically seen with instant runoff voting, my, my primary objection to it is the Australian lower house uses instant runoff voting to elect all their members and they have no third party presence whatsoever. Here, here in um, the United States, we at least even have independents, be it Li Lieberman or um, uh, in, from either from Vermont, uh, Bernie Sanders. So, so I, I find it, the mathematicians can argue against instant runoff voting. Mine is, my, I come back to attainability. With regards to approval voting, the only thing that needs to be changed on the ballot, per se, is the instruction saying, vote for one or more. That's the only difference. On the optical scanning of the ballots, here in both New Hampshire and Colorado, we have it where you can cast as many, many votes as there are open seats. Uh, my poster child for Colorado is a charter commission of casting 21 out of 35, for 21, you could vote for 21 candidates out of 35 that were running. Pretty close to approval voting. I'm greedy, I'd want you to be able to ca vote for all 30, 35 if you wanted to. Some people dilutes your vote, but you have the opportunity. I want you to have the right to express yourself and be um, pragmatically honest. Who do you like? If you, if you hate one of them, wouldn't it be pleasurable to vote for everyone else? Any, I can continue babbling, but let me address questions just before I go further. So in Colorado, yes. I'm from Colorado myself. So oh, wonderful. Okay. Would you go about changing the voting laws? Uh, what is the process for that? And, and how, do you, how do you think these two senators are going to help you? Um, in Colorado, nationwide, states decide their own election methods. In Colorado, home rule cities can change, can determine their own election method because the way the legislature is set up home rule cities, home rule cities have that ability. The next question is, if a home rule city that tries to contract its election through a, a county, is the county authorized to use approval voting or not? The lawyers will get loose with that. My bill, my, not my bill, our bill, our bill in Colorado was for enabling legislation for statutory municipalities and special districts to use approval voting if they wanted to. My logic at the time was that the legislature was more familiar with voting methods, would perhaps be a little bit more courageous than city council at the city council level trying to change their bill. So, Having been defeated two weeks ago, having on Wednesday had our after action report meeting and lessons learned, our conclusion is we got to push both ways. We've got to push at home rule cities and also come back at the legislature and be able to say to the legislature, the reason we want this legislation is to clarify the coordinated election issue. Here in here in New Hampshire, I don't think your counties are quite as strong. I don't think they run your elections, do they? Okay, so the, the body running the election 
could choose to go with approval voting. Uh, Senator McGuire here in, here in New Hampshire is going with approaching this from the overvote perspective. Currently, if you cast more votes than you're authorized to cast, it nullifies that portion of your ballot. And his, his logic, I think, is there's too many overvotes, and this would permit people to vote for more um, fewer, spoiled ballots. fewer spoiled ballots. Thank you. Thank you very much. My, uh, any other questions, thoughts? Um, you asked about um, IRV. Yes. Uh, we get a lot of discussions about that. Um, we should know is what does IRV offer for libertarians? The answer is nothing. Can you speak yeah. up a little, please? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to come to the mic? Um, So what does IRV offer for libertarians? It's, 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 a, it's a bad system by itself, but for libertarians in particular, it's bad. Because, uh, see, approval voting produces compromise winners. IRV does not do that, and the LP is the compromise party, right? We're kind of, we have appeal, or at least we're palatable, to the left and the right, right? Ron Paul, if he'd made it to the, to the final to the general election, he could have attracted voters from the left the anti-war voters in the left, right? But didn't make it that far. IRV eliminates compromise candidates if they're not very popular early in the, the rounds of elimination. So the, the libertarian candidate under IRV would probably get eliminated in one of the first rounds. So Because the second place votes are not counted under IRV until, until late. Yes, I'm. Whether you win or not. True, and I. Yes, I'm an advocate for approval voting, and at the same time, I, I am polite and grateful for those pushing an effort for IRV. I'm. I would. I. I don't. Where it's been used, it's had complications in Colorado specifically. An Aspen le election got contested. It got ugly. It it wasn't simple. It got repealed. I come back again to attainability. Approval voting's attainable. Uh, finally, the question's going to surface. Oh, where is it currently being used of a political nature? To which I reply, nowhere. It's being used by the Pirate Party in Germany for their internal elections. It's being used by quite a number of engineering and mathematical organizations in the United States. It is currently not being used in any uh, governmental elections. With regards to governmental history, then I can say, oh, 500 years of Spartan democracy uh, that ended about 200 a BC, or 500 years of Venetian Doge elections that ended about 1800. But I, that usually in most crowds doesn't carry much weight and I try to avoid it. But I at least want to fess up that at, at the local, not local, at, at our current level, approval voting needs to be used at, at a level, see if it works, discover that there's more civility, fewer spoilers, 
less sabotage, viability and visibility for minor parties. You're not, if you are the major party, your scare is that somebody else is going to come up and sabotage you. How, how, do, you, how do you train your next set of leaders if you can't, if you're scared to let them get in the ring to jeopardize your winning? I, th I think um, approval voting's attainable. Yes? Uh, what's the argument against it? Um, the argument, I'm still mad at Amber out in Colorado who represented the clerks. Uh, number one, voter, voter confusion. Voters won't read the top of the ballot and discover how, or will read it on certain elections and then try to use it on others and won't realize they have to um, uh, read the instructions. Uh, voter confusion. She claims uh, they can't handle the process. When you can handle 21 of 35, you can handle the process. She claims that um, perhaps a convenient mental block on her. Let me. It's escaping me. Well, the big minus is if it enables third parties. It, which to us is a plus. But to the Republican Party, it's a minus, right? And that's a well, that would, you'd think that would, they would object to that, but when they've seen what can happen when a spoiler comes along. Are you local? Okay, well, in uh, our last election, Bob Ginsburg, I looked at the law, and it's in the Bob Ginsburg, because of the health and spoiler. Right. <laughs> right, there you go. right, and so they should be in favor of it. So we would give up the ability to spoil. Right. So we, we lose one of our weapons, right? But in return for that, we get visibility. Fair trade. I know, uh, I, I wonder about it, and maybe, and maybe I should, uh, shouldn't question it in this regard. But I know I'm in Maine, where we have only three recognized parties, the Republican Party, the Democrat Party, and the Green Party. And the Libertarian Party hasn't managed to get on the ballot. And I know, you know, I'm a Liberty Republican. I'm still working in the Republican Party. And I know that some of the Republican victories we've gained have only been because the Democrats and the Greens have split the vote, or the Democrats and the Progressive Independent have split the vote. And so I'm thinking, I love this idea. But then I'm thinking, man, to do it in our state, Maybe it would, we, it would uh, cast us down the pit of, of a progressive spiral that we could never return from. If that's what they want, I have to say that's... Yeah. State's lost and let it die. Yeah. <laughs> 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 maybe, maybe I would have to. Let, let me, in back row, yes, sir. Your proposal yes. comes to fruition and becomes common practice. How do you envision elections being different and freedom and liberty being promoted throughout the, the land? Uh, this would be state by state because each legislature would be deciding it. Uh, because of the viability and visibility, uh, Sharon Harris of the Advocates argues that uh, I think her number is somewhere between 15 and 20 percent score libertarian on the world's smallest political quiz and currently are completely invisible. And what I would picture is that 15 or 20 percent getting a bit more publicity, perhaps getting as high as 20, 20 25 percent. Granted, it's at the top of the chart. Traditionally, it's, it scores 60 percent from Republicans. 40% from libertarian, from Democrats. I would think the major parties, one of two things is going to happen. Either we, we bleed all the way down and be, are able to win with a libertarian candidate. More likely, I would expect the major parties to co-op our issues and move themselves up the chart so that we move the whole center up. Am I answering your question? Yes, thank you. Okay. I didn't understand this. Pardon me? I didn't understand what you said. Okay. Um, world's smallest, you're familiar with uh, 
the world's smallest political quiz. Currently, currently the libertarians are that 1% at the very top of the chart, is where I, I put us. With approval voting, what would happen, I would picture speculation, no truth to it, but speculation. Uh, Democrats still getting 50%, initially, Republicans getting 50%, Libertarians getting 25%, and uh, Greens getting 5% and American Constitution on, on the right getting percent. Um, with that, one of two things happens from that point. Either that Libertarian influence comes down even further and we have an even better candidate and push it so that when we start plotting the pro plotting presidential material, instead of being left-right, we'll be plotting them top-bottom. Jefferson versus Hamilton, top-bottom. I also think what might happen, more likely in my mind, is that the um, Republicans and, and uh, Republicans and Democrats would co-op issues, say, oh, if you're, and move the whole chart up, so to speak. Is that my, my babbling? Okay. Yes, sir. Um, in terms of ease of implementation on both the clerical selectment side of uh, calculating the votes and, uh, you know, AccuVote scan, uh, optical reviewing we currently have the measure. And, and on the side of the voters' ease, I mean, I, for one, think if it says vote for one or more, and you can't decipher that column for vote for one, I think that's your bar for whether you should be a voter or not right there. <laughs> um, I mean, that's, 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 you have to get so, but one. anyway. Okay. Dean's an introduction on both, you know, the popular side and the calculation. Yes. Uh, is, it, is this the easiest? Uh, out of all the range voting and rank voting and all those other IRB, is this the easiest to implement now? In my mind, yes, because as I said, the instructions change from vote for one to vote for one or more. With, with either instant runoff voting or range voting, which I, I sometimes describe as being Olympic judging, let's say from from zero to 10, Olympic judging. With Olympic judging, somehow you need to get those 10 additional bubbles next to that candidate for that voter to, to fill in the right bubble. I, my mathematician friends would like to see the range voting, the Olympic judging method. I, I've been to too many, one too many, Senate committees in which I watched a transparency bill get killed because it's so much more expensive to send electrons out on the internet. And I just said, oops, if, if, you, can, if you can kill this bill on electrons on the internet, additional expense, I'm not going to give you the chance of killing an alternative voting method because there's too many bubbles on the, on the ballot. So um, I've sold my soul numerous times, and you can talk with the mathematicians. They'll tell They did bless me. They, they did give me um, dispensation, is it called, and said, let me uh, go forth, sin no more, push approval voting. Yes, sir. Would this legislation impact ballot access at all? So in other words, no. in some states you have, the, you have to reach that 5% threshold. Could it potentially help a party reach that threshold? I would think it would, yes. I think this would. Um, it, they, they may change the scoring method. I mean, because, okay, let's, let me see if I can do my math. Uh, yes. Hypothetically, there's uh, three parties on the ballot. 50% go Republican, 50% go Democrat, 25% go um, uh, Libertarian. 
it adds up to 125 percent of the um, of the voting population because of the overlaps. In a sense, the libertarians only got uh, 20 percent of the total votes cast. So it may change there. It it might take mathematics on that, but I think it's minor compared to the viability and visibility, especially when we've got um, Sharon Harris saying there's uh, 15 to 20 percent already in that quadrant. But the legislation doesn't address that issue. No, no, no. In Colorado, I'm a total coward. I've gone with um, nonpartisan elections completely. Haven't sell it as not touching partisan elections at all. Here in, here in New Hampshire, you're a bit more courageous. And um, who knows what will work? Um, next year, I, I know I'm in a race with New Hampshire to see if, if you pass legislation first. Which one of us do? Is there sample legislation online that, you know, I can tell the um, state legislature and say, like, you look into this? Uh, in Colorado, it's Senate Bill 13-065. And uh, it's legalese that puts me to sleep. <laughs> HB 240 in 2011 for, um, for New Hampshire. Questions, thoughts? Uh, I like Gary Johnson. Any of you seen the movie? Or who's old enough here for Kurt Douglas in Spartacus? Okay, then I'll try to explain it adequately for the rest of you. I'm only 48. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, I'm, you know, 23. So <laughs> the movie ends. The movie ends with Spartacus a slave army being defeated by the Roman army. And the Roman general announces, I'm going to be gracious to all of you. I'm, I'm not going to crucify you if you identify who Spartacus is. And so the, the scene is, Kurt Douglas is getting up on his feet, and before he gets up on his feet, his friends start yelling, I'm Spartacus, I'm Spartacus. And maybe you've seen that you know, I hope I've got the courage to be um, Gary Johnson. Granted, the two of us don't quite look the like, but I hope I'd have the courage to say, I'm Gary Johnson. But along with saying, I'm Gary Johnson, I think, you know, looking back on that road, you. And then the movie Spartacus concludes with the slaves being crucified every 30 yards on the Appian Way going to Rome. And I'm saying, you know, what I can do best for Gary Johnson is get him off that cross next time and not have him crucified with minuscule numbers because of the wasted vote argument. And I think that's, I, I just look back 40 years, we've been noise of the noise. This is the way to get off that cross and actually make a, more of a presence than just be, be that 1% again. Questions, thoughts? Um, hope each of you are someday a Gary Johnson. And um, we can continue on. If uh, there's three sets of literature, one, one is this if you need that, um, this sort of, is, is anyone unclear about approval voting? I mean, let the voter vote for more than one candidate and go forward. What time have I trapped? Two o'clock. Sir. Two o'clock. Okay. I will come on IRV because Frank's very charitable to IRV. I'm not. <laughs> terrible system. It does not produce compromise. It does not help. IRV is ranked voting? Uh, no. Oh, the names. Well, okay. instant runoff voting. There's a variation called ranked choice voting, okay. which they, they truncated at your top three. So yeah. First, check, second, third, and then one. Um, 
So IRV does not produce compromise. IRV does not help libertarians. The, the LP, sorry, the LP itself. And it's got a, 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 a fatal complication. You cannot sum the results of local elections to form the regional totals and sum the regional totals to form the national totals. All right? Explain how, if you know what RRV is, uh, we haven't gone over it, but the, the way it works is you cannot sum it up. The, the other methods you can sum, they end up being points, and you can sum the points up. Is this, the, is this what they have in Cambridge? Yes, this is what's in Cambridge. It, the, all the ballots have to be consolidated in one location, one computer, and it, on that computer you have to do your final sort and only sort because any any other cons uh, trying to to massage the numbers on the way up won't work as um, Steve is saying so I yes I'm des sold my soul with the Greens to be polite with them and I am very grateful that the Greens have been supportive of approval voting this last election, uh, this last Senate hearing. Uh, both the Green advocate for IRV and the um, couple progressives have been supportive of, instant, of, of approval voting. Approval vote. Uh, I can promise you if you want to get into the minutia of elections, it'll put you to sleep promptly. Uh, unless you've got unless as good a brains as Steve. Does it comply? I was just wondering, the IRB is coming up a lot in Maine right now because the, the, the Dems are trying not to have their split vote problem again for the next governor's race. Um, could, could you... Could, could you go over that a little bit more in, in depth on, on the problems with IRB? Okay, well, one problem is just the complexity of it. Okay. I mean, you just start explaining to somebody, to, to a normal person, that okay, you rank the candidates, and then we count up which candidate has the fewest number of first place votes, and we eliminate it. And then we transfer all of his second place, all, the, all, the, all those, pe those people who you just got thrown out, all of their second place votes become now first place votes, and we recalculate the the order and eliminate the next guy. I mean, I can't even explain that actually. I mean, how do you? Okay, some people just go, "Wow, yeah, that sounds that sounds great," you know. But yeah. they don't understand it. Some people are going to say, "I don't think you're talking about. I don't trust that." Yeah. How, how does that magically produce results? The people have to trust the system. Yeah. Um, the complexity of the ballot. How do you, how do you make a ballot to show ranking? Mm. You know, do you, you do pens you do write in the numbers. Or do you, if you have 10 candidates, you have 10 bubble, 10 columns of bubbles, and you fill, you know, uh, it makes the ballot much more complex. Completely different software to, 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 to calculate. I mean, people already, m most libertarians, if you ask about voting reform, they think you mean voting machine reform, right? The, the Diebold? Diebold and Segway. How about that stuff, right? Um, well, if you don't trust a machine to simply add up you know, ones and zeros. How are you going to trust it to calculate this stuff? You know, yeah. um, plus it's just a bad system. I mean, you ask I, any theorist. You know, it's a what? Who's who's advocating for it? The Democrats, right? Yeah, I'm just going through all. <laughs> need the need we? It's coming up like six times under six different. <laughs> Democrats. The Democrats are trying to minimize their problem by mathematically silencing their Greens. Do you trust them? Do, should the Greens trust them? Absolutely not. <laughs> exactly. You ask the Greens, how's this going to help you? As, I mean, run, run through a scenario. Now, how, how does this help you guys? The, the reason the Greens advocate, <laughs> the reason the Greens, ad, number one, the Greens advocate proportional representation. They would like to see a, a, a legislative body that is proportional to the, the vote, so to speak. And the best, okay, let's get into racist terms. 
let's say hypothetically 60% of the city's population is white, 40% is black, and you're electing 10, 10 representatives. We're going to assume they're racist. What, what percent, how many of the 10 elected, elected city council members are going to be white? All 10, because they've got the 60% there to do it. Now, instant runoff voting and its more complicated single transferable vote permits the situation to have six of them being white, four of them being black, and negates that, provides, provides a proportional representation mathematical possibility to it that's not going to currently happen. So if it's proportional representation, which the Greens want from all along, then yes, instant runoff voting is the direction to go. If it is a single winner, then approval voting is the best way to do it. Birds and the bees. I've gotten on race, my mother will be mad at me for getting on race, let's get on birds and the bees. Let's just see how many people here, we're going to ask a yes, no question. How many of you feel the queen bee is monogamous? If yes, put up your hand. Anybody feel the queen bee is monogamous? Okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, thank you for diversity here. Um, on her maiden flight, she mates with about a dozen drones, and that provides the diversity, the mix, the genetics to get more, more diversity into the population of the hive. Now, there you're aiming for diversity. You want proportional representation. You want the better ones to win. Now, the next question for the birds and the bees question is, when a swarm migrates out of, a, out of its home hive, how many, how many shopping trips does it do to find its next hive? It's only gonna move into a next hive once, and they use the bees use sort of uh, range voting, approval voting, to select that one and only next hive that they're depending on for the next rest of the rest of their lifetime. And so, what what I'm trying to say here, and my mother will be mad at me more, is proportional representation. Use that diversity. Use that mix. Go ahead. Great. But when you've got to select one and only one choice and a 5% better choice is coming along that you'll be happier with, go with approval voting and uh, range voting. So I babbled too much. I, I think that's the, the Greens like, a, uh, like IRV as a step towards. Exactly. The, the single, it's called STB, single transferable voting system uh, with proportional representation as their final goal. Yeah, IRB won't give them that, but it, the, the two systems are similar, so that's a step towards that. Could you explain that, what that is? Um, which, which, which one is? What is something Single transferable, transferable vote. It, it works kind of the same way. I, okay, I'm, I'm going to try to, with, with IRV, instant runoff voting, we agree you you take everyone's ballot, you get a stack of first choice, first choice, first choice, first choice. The ones that's narrowest, you then put back through. You then, when, when a candidate reaches a, reaches a majority, a decision's been made. But with single transferable vote, when you reach the threshold, Let's say you're voting for three people. When, you, when one of the candidates gets 33 and a third percent, then you start taking 
the rest of them and dividing them up proportional to remaining candidates. And, and the math gets crazy, even worse. So I, I know I haven't answered it. Talk with the Greens and see if they can satisfy you. Is the Libertarian Party not in favor of representative um, proportional representation? I mean, I would think that would be a benefit. Uh, I, don't Otherwise, think I don't think anybody's opposed to it. No. Yeah, well, of course, because if right. you get, your other choice is nothing. Yeah. Well, it's because it's simply, piece or nothing. It's simply honest, right? Isn't that what you? I think it'd be awesome if you could just like log in and be like, "I'm sick of my state rep. I am no Why? longer. <laughs> you are no longer my state rep. You're fired, and then you become someone next." We, we're, we're not going to get there. The proportional is such a big jump from where we are now that most of us would consider that not realistic. Right? And the greed is the only way, so they have to go for that. But we can be satisfied with this little tweak. I mean, approvability. Just remove that limit, and all of a sudden the LP becomes viable. Yeah. Right? Not being squeezed out of the center for. Um, Boardwalk analogies with regards to ice cream shops. If there's one ice cream shop on the boardwalk, where will it be? Anywhere he wants to be. If there's two on the boardwalk, where will they be? One at 51 and one at 49, trying to get people that hit them first, agreed? The question becomes, if there's three on the boardwalk, where is the libertarian ice cream shop? There at 50, squeezed back at the far end of the alley with no customers. Just, just as I'm hearing all this and just thinking out loud, I do like the, I do like the fact that, you know, based on elections that I've seen, it's interesting how the people, the candidates who are the most ideologically similar become the worst enemies because they're competing yes. for the same vote. Yes. But, you know, I, I, you know, I know, and I had mentioned this to you earlier, I know in, in the state of Maine, we just had a Republican primary for Senate to replace Olympia Snow who resigned. There were six candidates running. Um, there were three candidates who were acceptable in my book who were, uh, one was pretty strong liberty and the other two were shades of, you know, liberty leaning. And then there were three others that just I would never, never support. The three Shades of Liberty candidates came in second, third, and fourth. And, and Splitting the vote. Because they split the vote and no one could consolidate behind one person. And they, they beat each other up in the election. And they beat each other up in the election. There was, there was really, um, they, they were really nasty to each was, other. And see, when that happens in the primary, when similar candidates do that in the primary, the point the voters, right? I mean, you get tired of making the campaign. But then the opponents, like in the last Republican primary, you know the Obama team is just collecting all those zingers. Ooh, yeah, that's a good one. We'll, we'll, we'll use that against Romney. You know? Um, so they damage each other. They, so they emerge from the primary damaged. Right. You know? And, and your, your party unity is, 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 is reduced, right? You have you know, the, the Hillary Clinton Obama conflict, so, right? But under approval voting, it's no longer a zero sum game. Right? A vote for you isn't necessarily a vote against me. We can both get the vote. So we can even like build each other up, right? Yeah. You know? The, well, the and I and I wonder you know, and I wonder as a stepping stone in the right direction if it's possible to try to get approval voting passed with an within an internal party apparatus to get it like in the Republican primary. Yeah. Where? And then it, well, that's kind of its own experiment, and then it can be used as justification to later use that for the actual exactly. federal election. Exactly. That's what I'm doing with municipalities in Colorado. What we're trying to do is get it compatible at the municipality level and move up, move it in the party level, wherever, wherever a group is. When I think it, I said to when you're deciding on a movie or a restaurant, you don't tell people one and only one vote. Don't you dare waste it on the little Thai restaurant around the corner. <laughs> you know, it, it happen approval voting gives you that civility of talking about it and, and discussing and saying, you know, where, where do I prefer? And, and each person will draw their threshold line. I, the more votes you cast at one argument, the more you've diluted your vote, 
But that may be how you feel. If you hate one of them, why not vote for everyone else and just get the message out there? Or if you like them all, why not vote for all of the above, right? Like, I, I like all kinds of restaurants. I, I say I'm easy, whatever you guys want. I'm not usually looking for none of the above. <laughs> I would love to get it. I would love to, along with the approval voting, get it under the above. That's in politics. First thing, first thing. Next. I said the same thing that he did when I was talking to Frank Gatsby. I said, Bruce DeVillians. Did anybody remember that movie? Mm -hmm. He bought the election. He said, vote for none of the above. He won. <laughs> and I believe in that. If you're not happy, either you become part of politics or vote for everyone. There you go. So if you get some more votes and you give to that person, it might take away from the guy you really hate. You never know. You never know. Is this just your project, or are there people working on this other places too? There's, there's Steve here in New Hampshire. I'm, I'm the conspicuous one in Colorado. We had 12, maybe all my friends, but uh, eight friends and four distant people spoke on behalf, uh, behalf of the bill two weeks ago, and. Um, I, it does feel lonesome at times. I'm grateful that I'm not alone on it. But uh, yes, sometimes it's, it is me, but um, sometimes, but more, more accurately, it's others. I mean, the state senator in Colorado, my secretary of state, our um, well, representative. I mean, you've got yes. Approval. I've, I'm, one of my organizations is Approval Voting USA. Another organization that I was, I'm with is Colorado Coalition for Approval Voting. And then there's Electology. Center for Election Science and Ecology.org. They've got a, a uh, project that just launched yesterday, in fact. They want to collect money to produce a, a nice quality video to educate people on this. Yeah, is there a clearinghouse of information for this? That's you know, if we want to, okay. There's actually yeah. lots of little websites. There's all kinds of theorists out there with their own websites, which are really not nicely done. This one's actually finally nicely done. Right? Wikipedia, five, is, Wikipedia is actually not bad if you want to learn some of the details. Yeah. Yes. One article. Yeah, there's there's a surprising level of detail on Wikipedia about voting theory. Yeah. Which, I don't know. It's also what was that? Yeah, you're right, right. You can check the sources, which is helpful. This is a no, real I, religious issue. I know. have a, I have an observation Texas. listening to this discussion. There's a, a brand name here of approval voting and uh, comments about, you know, uh, the details make us all want to fall asleep and whatnot. But I wonder if anybody else has ever um, sat in a car with three or four people and figured out where to go to lunch, unbeknownst to us, using that method and having superior results. And if that uh, common experience might be a way to sell this concept. Uh, you know, take your city council out to lunch and just do it. I don't want to where you guys want to go, so tell me, you know, all the places yeah. you'd like to eat, we'll figure out which one, you know, turns out best, and you go there. And then at lunch you can explain, this is called approval voting. Are you having a nice meal? <laughs> I'll work on it. I'll work on it. And, and uh, right, agreed. That's why um, less partisan Less aggravation, I went with a lunch menu here, a lunch choice rather than um, a history of Nader. <laughs> and of course, while you're at lunch, you can also point out that they each got to order their own meal, and maybe that's a model for talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Next time. Thank you very, very much. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.